Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ask Dr. Rakov. I'm Dr. Shama Rakov from the Center for Men's and Women's Urology in Portland, Oregon. And I want to thank you again for sending in really very wonderful questions. This week we had a number of really good topics to, to uh, take on. I'm just going to choose one, and one which I uh, do so with a little bit of trepidation because it's a very, very difficult and uh, controversial topic. I'm going to read the question itself. Doc, should I get screened for prostate cancer? I'd rather not be, and I hear conflicting reasons as to if I should or not. Thought I'd ask. And that is a tremendous question, and it is a minefield. Over the last number of years, there's been a lot of uh, people weighing in on the pros and cons of prostate cancer screening, but I want to step back a little bit and just start to think about a little bit of the reason why we talk about screening in the first place. We've all seen the ravages of chronic diseases, uh, including cancer. And it kind of makes sense for us to say, well, is there a way of preventing that outcome? Isn't it reasonable to try to identify people who are going to get the diseases early on, do things to make changes and address it so that we don't have to contend with the terrible life-altering and life-ending changes from these disease processes? And in fact, there are a lot of diseases and a lot of cancers that if we identify them early enough and implement different therapies, uh, we could alter the long-term uh, effect and save people's lives and in certain ways, more importantly, save uh, terrible uh, pain and uh, diminished quality of life. And when it comes to cancers and prostate cancer, the truth is that we know that certain men uh, who are treated for prostate cancer are cured of the cancer and we've certainly improved um, the survival and have minimized or have limited the death rate from prostate cancer uh, since implementing aggressive therapies for it. The difficulty is that when it comes to a problem like prostate cancer there are a lot of men who die of prostate cancer every year but to put that into perspective, there are enormous numbers of men who actually have prostate cancer and who will not have problems from it and certainly not die of it. So we have this discrepancy between those people who have a disease and will succumb to it versus the total number of people who have it and won't be bothered by it. And in order to try to find those men who would benefit from treatment, we have to put a whole lot of other men through testing that they don't need and may cause side effects. So to think about it this way is that if we had a test to screen for a disease such as prostate cancer and that test was easy to go through, it was relatively inexpensive, and that it was a good test, meaning that if the test were positive you could be fairly sure that you had a cancer that you needed to know about, and if it was negative, uh, you could be fairly reassured that you didn't have anything dangerous, that would be great. And if by going through that test you were not risking any side effects, that would be ideal. But when it comes to prostate cancer, unfortunately at this time we don't have the luxury of such an ideal test. And when we put a man through screening, which usually involves uh, a digital rectal exam and a blood test called a PSA, inherent in doing these tests are the imperfections of these tests. So a test can be abnormal, but when we go through subsequent testing, we find no cancer. Sometimes these tests can be normal, and in fact, we overlook cancers. And worse than that is in order to go through the testing to see if there's a cancer, if our screening test is abnormal, we pursue biopsies, and those biopsies have potential complications such as bleeding and sometimes serious infection. And therein lies the whole dilemma. Can we treat prostate cancer? Very often we can. Can we save lives by treating prostate cancer? Very often we can as well. But at what risk are we willing to take to do so? And if you're a man who at this point feels really good, has no clinical suggestion that there is a disease going on within your body, and if in order to try to figure out if there is a disease you risk potential side effects, and if you have a disease, you risk treatments that may lead to severe side effects. Are you willing to take that risk and go through that process understanding 
that sometimes it's worth it. But unfortunately, sometimes you'll go through all that, and if you had never done it at all, you'd live the same happy, hopefully healthy, and pain-free life. And therein is the issue with the screening. So with all of that as a background, you could see it would be irresponsible for me to just say yes, you should, or no, you shouldn't get screened. But I can tell you this is a issue that every single man, myself included, really has to come to grips with, one way or the other. It would therefore be imperative that you find out who in your area is really uh, able to have that discussion with you. It's not every doctor, unfortunately. It really requires a specialist who has known expertise in prostate cancer and the issues around screening. You don't want to get yourself into a discussion with someone who has a prejudice or a bias one way or the other. It doesn't do you any good. So try to see in your area, is there someone who is an expert and someone who is considered to be objective? These days, I would go to the internet, see if there are people who have published, people who do educational videos, people who are giving lectures in the community or the university. Those would be the people that I'd sit down and talk to. But bias and prejudice has no role when it comes to these life-altering decisions. Find the right person to speak to.